Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2KDev. Now in this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different to usual. Um, normally I make game development videos, but today I'm going to be doing a basics of Swift, um, the new language created by Apple. Now I don't know if, uh, if many of you have heard, but Swift is going to be the replacement for Objective-C. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's about 20 years old now, Objective-C, and it's starting to show its age. Um, it's obviously based on the C language, and I mean, that inherently brings a bunch of problems with it, uh, just because of that, and it's definitely not a competitor for something like Microsoft C-Sharp. Um, some would argue that it is better than, ob than C-Sharp, but um, I'm talking in terms of uh, modern programming and things like that. So. Today we're just going to start off with uh, variables. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction on how to create some of these variables and what they mean. So look, we'll start off with the, the basic variable. So in the new programming language Swift, uh, variables are constructed using the var statement, much like uh, the languages such as uh, JavaScript. And they are not strongly typed. And what that means is when you create a variable, the, the default value that you give it will determine its type. For example, if I were to say var name equals Ryan, the compiler will automatically recognize that this variable is now going to be a string. Whereas if I were to say name equals 1, the compiler will then realize that this is going to be an integer. If I were to say this is 1.079594777765, the compiler will probably uh, realize that this is going to be a floating point number and depending on the precision and the value will either assign it to be a float or a double. So this is uh, the basics of variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and we're just going to say something like name equals Ryan because that's my name. The next variable we're going to create is var title equals Mr because I am a male and that is the title that I go by. Um, then what we can start to do is we can start to come across these uh, some of the things that we would do in other languages such as concatenation. Now we've got two strings here and we want to combine these together to create something like Mr. Ryan. So if we create a new variable, and we're just going to call this one here uh, return value, something like that. Traditionally we would program this value and say something like title plus and then a space in a string and then plus name. Now what you're seeing here on the right hand side and this is an amazing feature uh, provided to us by the the playground for the Swift programming language it's in real time evaluating what I've been typing into the uh, text editor here and actually calculating and working out what these variables should be. So at the top here you'll see that name equals Ryan uh, title equals Mr. and our concatenated val uh, variables are going to say Mr. Ryan. But this is the old way of doing things and uh, Swift gives us this really cool feature called string interpolation. And what this basically means is we can construct a string that's made up of multiple uh, variables uh, all in line and I'm going to show you an example of that. So if I were to say something like hello and then I wanted to say my name I could then place a slash and parentheses and then say name. Now what you'll see on the right hand side, this has automatically figured out that this section of code that I've created here, the slash parentheses name parentheses close, is going to be replaced by the variable that I have in scope named Ryan. Sorry, name which contains Ryan. Now that string automatically receives that value. We can do the same thing again, but this time say Mr sorry not Mr. <laughs> title because that's going to be the title and if you have a look at the result compiled to us from the compiler you'll see a similar situation here but this time containing both of these variables you might be asking yourself why is this really useful compared to say just going and adding a plus sign and then adding a space and then another plus sign uh, a good example of this is in the real world when you're programming something um, I'm going to use SMS as an example uh, Sorry, excuse me for that. I'm going to use SMS as an example, as this is something I've had to deal with in my current um, employment. We use an SMS provider that has a HTTP API, and you can imagine that the the URL is going to look like something like this: myprovider. dot 
com slash API slash v0 slash SMS and then we provide it a bunch of values like uh, from equals then a mobile number to equals and a mobile number uh, message equals hello this is my message something like that when doing that in a traditional sense where you would have to say uh, start of URL and then a plus sign and then you know you add a question mark here and then an equals uh, and then you add number and then a plus sign and another open parentheses and then you add an and message equals it just gets very messy what this is allowing us to do in the future of coding uh, is to create something like more like this my provider dot com slash api slash v0 slash sms question mark from equals then we simply just add a forward i think it's a forward slash a forward slash in brackets and we would say uh, our from var and then we could say question mark sorry and two equals slash bracket two number and it makes it much cleaner because we don't have to deal with all these extra symbols so that's just a real world practical example of um, string interpolation now you might be wondering to yourself uh, oh, not sure what happened there uh, you might be wondering to yourself how do we create a strongly typed variable because it's not always the case that we want these variables to be created for us and detected based on their values and this is quite simple as well we can basically just say var name semicolon string equals Ryan and basically what we're doing there is we're just telling the compiler uh, oh sorry it's not letting me have the name because I've already declared that before um, we'll call this strong name there we go strong name there we go strong name by saying semicolon and then string sorry not semicolon colon and then string we're basically telling the compiler that this variable must be a string and this could be anything we could change this to int it will throw us an error because the variable type is no longer a, is not a number but if we change that to say number one that will work perfectly but since it's a name we're going to change that to be string and I'm just going to put my name back in here. So that's how you create a strongly typed variable and a strongly typed variable basically means that you are specifying to the compiler exactly what you want that variable to be. Now something else that's quite cool with this uh, string interpolation uh, we can actually do some sort of basic calculations using that. So if I, were to, if I was making a game or if I was doing a counter or something like that and I had a score and a multiplier I could say var score equals I don't know, whatever the player's score was, let's say it was 125. And they've been doing tricks in this game and, uh, you know, accruing a multiplier. I can say multi equals four. So they've got a four times multiplier. And if I wanted to output onto the screen some sort of cool message that basically says your score is, and then the result of the score multiplied by the multiplier, we could do this by basically saying var output I'm just pretending here the output is going to be what we render to the screen we start a string we say your score is place our colon in them and now we just do our forward slash and our brackets we say score multiplied by multi and the compiler in real time is going to figure out what this is and actually generate us the output of that and it's going to say over here on the right hand side your score is 500 which is 4 multiplied sorry 4 multiplied by 125 or 125 multiplied by 4. So that's just another interesting use for this uh, string interpolation and I haven't really seen that in any other language. Um, I'm not sure if it does exist in other languages. My main sort of languages are C Sharp, uh, C++, um, uh, JavaScript and things like that. Uh, HTML obviously, CSS and other you know um, web front-end languages like that. So this is just something interesting This sort of reminds me of uh, client-side templating using a, li a library like Mustache. So that's just going to be the basics of variables inside of uh, Swift. The other type of variable we have is a constant variable. And that's going to be a variable that doesn't change. Now I, li I really like the terminology they've used here with the var for variables. The terminology for a constant variable is let. So we can basically say let something equal something else and this reads to me like it was an English statement we're basically saying let uh, let player equal Ryan 
and basically that's going to be a constant variable. We can't reassign that throughout um, throughout the runtime of our application. We wouldn't be able to say player equals test and change that value because we've basically said that player is going to constantly be the name Ryan. So this is not a variable as such. It doesn't it doesn't change over time. The reason why these are useful, you can use these as uh, strings. In, in a real world example, you could use this as like public underscore DNS equals uh, HTTP my website dot com. And if you were using an app, if you were doing an application that had some sort of API calls, you would then basically go around your application and say public underscore DNS, and then you would concatenate onto that the request slash v zero slash get user. And that way, should you ever DNS change, you come to your configuration set of your app side of your application, and then you change public DNS to be whatever the new DNS is, and suddenly all those changes roll out to everywhere that you've made use of that. So that's just a quick example of how variables and constants work inside of Swift. So thank you guys for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm going to be posting a few more videos. The next video we're going to be talking about arrays. We're going to move into for loops, conditional statements, functions, classes, inheritance, all of that sort of stuff as we go along. And I'm going to try and get these videos out there as fast as possible. So thank you guys for watching. Please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.